Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about what a diagonally dominant matrix is and why it is important in iterative numerical methods. So let's begin by writing the condition of a diagonally dominant matrix and then we can go through it to understand what it actually means. Alright, so we have the magnitude of our diagonal elements of a square matrix A must be greater than or equal to the sum of all the other non-diagonal elements within the same row with the condition that at least one of the rows must be strictly greater than. So we're basically saying here that we know our matrix will converge and we'll get an actual answer if in each of these rows the diagonal element is dominant over the rest of the elements in that specific row. Just remember, only focus on one row at a time when doing this, meaning that the sum of all the green elements in this row will be less than or equal to the blue element with at least one of the rows blue element being greater than the sum of all the green elements in that row. Just to clarify, if for every row you have a blue element equaling the sum of the green elements, then your matrix is not diagonally dominant, as you do not have at least one diagonal dominant over the other elements in that row. So let's look at two real quick examples, and that should clear up any potential confusion. So we have the following matrix, and we want to determine if it is diagonally dominant. So we begin with row 1 and test to see if the magnitude of our diagonal is dominant over the rest of the row. And as we can see here, it certainly is. Therefore, we can move on to the next row. And again, with rows 2 and 3, our diagonal elements are indeed dominant. Therefore, since all the rows passed our test, this matrix is diagonally dominant. This means that if we applied an iterative method to this matrix, we would be guaranteed convergence, which means we would get a unique solution. Let's move on to the next example. I recommend you pause the video for a minute and give this one a try on your own. Okay, so for row one, we again begin by testing to see if the matrix of our diagonal element is larger or equal to the sum of the other elements in the row. And as you can see here, it is indeed equal. So we can advance to the next row. Now we have run into a bit of a problem. In this row, the diagonal element is clearly less than the sum of the other components. Therefore, since one of our rows failed the diagonal dominance test, then we know that this matrix is not diagonally dominant. Thank you for checking out this video, and I hope it helped your understanding of what diagonal dominance of a matrix is and how we go about performing a diagonal dominance test. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below, and I will do my best to address your concerns.